Home Public Safety by Michael Cousin O New Hampshire Union Leader October 30, 2017 1116 AM Unitel is seeing a majority of its outages in the Concord and Seacoast areas, with about 23,000 customers without power. Unitel a Manchester firefighter at the scene of a downed tree early Monday morning, Jeffrey Hastings Manchester, a powerful storm fed by tropical moisture knocked out power to more than 270,000 homes and business across the state Monday, closing schools and leaving some people in the dark for days. Eversource reported around 190,000 customers at its peak, ranking it as one of its top five largest outages in New Hampshire. By midday, it had restored power to more than 100,000, but with new outages reported about 165,000 remained without power. Eversource NH Vice President of Electric Operations Joe Perrington said it would take multiple days to restore service to everyone. We have requested hundreds of additional line and tree crews to assist, he said. It will take time to assess and repair damage caused by this storm, and our crews will continue to work as quickly as is safely possible to restore power to our customers. Eversource spokeswoman Caitlin Wood said the storm produced widespread, extensive damage. The challenge with this storm is we lost a great deal of the energy system and it will take some time to assess and repair, she said. Wood said winds are predicted to pick up again Monday, so there is the potential for more damage to the system throughout the day. The state reported 270,000 outages statewide as of mid-morning. This will be at least a day-long outage for many, said Michael Todd, public information officer at the New Hampshire Department of Safety. He said the storm affected 330 roads, 230 local and 100 state, but no significant crashes were reported. Shelters were open in Campton, North Conway and Alexandria, he said. Due to weather-related delivery problems, the union leader has opened up to free access to day's edition. Down trees and power lines kept Manchester firefighters and police busy overnight. Jeffrey Hastings The storm, technically not a nor'easter because its winds came from the southeast, not northeast, produced wind gusts to hurricane strength on the Isles of Shoals 78 miles per hour and atop Mount Washington 131 miles per hour. Many places experienced gusts exceeding 50 miles per hour, including 59 miles per hour at Manchester Boston Regional Airport, 56 miles per hour in Portsmouth, and 51 miles per hour in Concord, according to the, the National Weather Service in Gray, Maine. It's been quite a doozy, said Margaret Curtis, a meteorologist there. Tropical storm Philippe kind of got sucked into the storm and helped intensify it, she said. The storm dropped heavy rains with 5.19 atop Mount Washington, 4.21 inches in Newberry and 4 inches in Epsom, with 2.25 inches in Manchester, 2.8 inches in Nashua and 2.85 inches in Jaffrey. At 10.30 a.m., outages exceeded 261,000 ever source, 179,575 New Hampshire Electric Coupe, 48,635 Unitil, 21,271 and Liberty Utilities, 12,171. Todd advised avoid driving if you can, drive carefully, expect debris and downed lines. He said generators should be kept away from structures, doors and windows. Don't touch downed lines directly, with anything or anything touched by a downed line. Due to weather-related delivery problems, the union leader has opened up to free access to day's edition. By mid-morning, more than 5,700 Eversource customers were without power in Manchester. Manchester police reported traffic lights not working at several intersections, including Maple and Valley Street, Silly Road and Maple Street, Bridge Street and Mammoth Road, South Street and Silly Road, McGregor Square and Amory and Bridge Streets. Highway crews were working to put out portable stop signs to avoid several areas, including Elliott Place and River Road West, Clark Street and River Road Hive and Amory Streets 120 Hughes Road and 130 Hughes Road. Fire capped. John Dubiansky works at a flooded section of Route 43 in Deerfield following the overnight storm Monday. David Lan Union leader New Hampshire Electric Coop also warned that not everybody will get power back Monday. Preliminary indications point to a multiple-day outage event, it said in a statement. If you are without power at this time, you should expect to remain without power possibly for a number of days. NHEC was unable to provide much guidance to the public as to when power will be restored where. Crews will need at least 2,448 hours to assess the scope of the damage when it is safe to do so. NHEC is working with its transmission providers to restore power to multiple substations that have lost power due to damage to high-voltage transmission lines. As a general rule, NHEC works to restore power to the greatest number of members, giving priority to emergency facilities. This restoration will be longer than the typical blue sky outage, Unidale tweeted Monday morning.
The extensive damage that the storm caused adds time to the restoration. A tree pulled down wires knocking out power and blocking traffic Monday morning on Meeting House Hill Road in Deerfield, David Land Union leader WMUR reported more than 430 closings around the state, including dozens of school districts. More than a dozen communities, including Durham and Portsmouth, were scheduled trick-or-treating for Monday night. In Nashua, Nashua Fire Rescue responded to more than 100 calls in 12-hour period beginning at 8 p.m. Sunday, NFR began to receive weather-related calls for trees down, blocked roads, water problems and wires arcing, said Deputy Chief George Walker. There were reports of flooded streets, wind-damaged buildings and several minor motor vehicle accidents. Power outages affected several areas of the city. During the storm's height, falling trees severely damaged several homes. About 2.30 a.m. Monday, a working fire at 12 Brookline Street heavily damaged a Nashua home. Nobody was home at the time, and investigators hadn't determined whether it was weather-related. General News Manchester